I recently spoke about Toho Lost World's downward trend, but this recent update has something for both casual and experienced players. And while it's not enough to save the game, it's certainly a step in the right direction. The majority of players in this game are the casuals, who mostly care about story, music, and collecting waifus. The free stuff in this update will keep these players logging in, but in order to retain them in the long term, the developers need to introduce them to the game's key mechanics like battling and farming. For the first time in over a year, they are giving out free costumes and you can farm them from event stages. This process is quite similar to how you might farm for story cards in the mid to late game, and I think you can convert a 2 months and then quits player into someone who finds out more about the game's mechanics and might decide to play it on for longer. They also released a new rhythm-based minigame, and while it seems like something you would just play once and then forget about, it actually helps to increase the accessibility of Toho Lost World to newer players. Let's say you are a newer player who made the foolish decision to learn more about this game and actually make some progress. You would need to farm some story cards, basically equipment for your characters, but the major issue would be the lack of good characters. To make up for this, you can use quantity to replace quality, and farm the states simply by using more characters. But if you use more characters, each battle will cost more spirit points and you'll quickly run out, hindering your progress into the mid or late game. And this is where Reimu's Great Exorcism comes into play. This minigame provides a hefty sum of spirit points every day, based on your player level. They also brought back EX Stages exchange shops, which means a lot more spirit points as well. This influx in spirit points means that you have more wiggle room when farming stages. This reduces the game's focus on spirit point efficiency when farming, which is massive. If you want to pull for your waifu, you are not punished as much because you can just farm stages at higher spirit point cost. If you don't have a lot of time to leave your phone open to farm, you can prioritize speed over spirit point efficiency. And most importantly, if you are a newer player without access to many characters, you can simply farm stages at high spirit point costs. Which is exactly what this guy did for the most recent JPEX stage. Previously, farming a stage at 61 spirit points would be ridiculous because you would run out of SP before you had a decent chance of getting the max copy of the card. The end result is that either you're good enough to make your own comp, or you have to copy someone else, there's no middle ground, and so it's very difficult to learn and get better. But with the amount of spirit points they are giving out, and the exchange shop, you can actually quite reasonably farm at high spirit point cost and still be guaranteed a copy of the card. I can tell you that this guy's comp is not optimized, and if I took a good look at it, I could surely cut one or two characters. But it is so satisfying to make your own comp and watch it work. And this guy did just that, I respect him for it. He's not the best player now, but he's getting there. It's a very difficult game, and it takes time to learn. Basically, the influx in spirit points as well as the return of these exchange shops reduces the barrier to entry for newer players, and makes it a lot easier for them to progress to the mid and late game. If you are enjoying this video so far, please consider subscribing. I'll do something special at 1k subs, and you can vote on it in the community post. Okay, so you spent 2-3 to three months grinding, and now you're at the end game. At this moment, it still sucks. The most recent JPEX stage has 1 and then 2 turns of boost and spell card luck, so basically you're spending 3 turns waiting and doing nothing, extending the time it takes per run. To get around this, you either need double lock removal, or barrier restoration plus an ability to keep up your offensive buffs. Basically, it's kinda like they are creating a problem and then selling the solution, which never feels good. The stage also inflicts blind, which screws over older characters who tend to have less accuracy. What I'm saying is, basically, these JPEX stages don't look like they're getting any better. But Phantasma is back, and... We're hoping um, actually to start up Elemental EX once again from, I think, the 3rd of February? <gasps> The Elemental Extra stages are quite excellent, they are made by Phantasma, not the JP team, and each have their own unique mechanics. They are currently having like sort of an event with the Elemental Extra stages with an exchange shop, and I had a lot of fun making some new team compositions with more recent units. It looks like Phantasma is awakening from the dead, and that's a great sign for the global side of this game. Of course, good stages take some time to develop. We're hoping 3rd of February to get, what is it, Wood EX in there? 
But in the meantime, they have really increased the game's economy with these uh, exchange shops. So it's kind of like they're buying some time with, uh, to keep players interested while they are making the new content. These exchange shops are a lot more generous by the way. It used to be 50,000 points or 500 runs to exchange for a card, but now it's just 6,000 points or 60 runs for the JPEX stage. For the Elemental EX event shop, they've brought back all the previous JPEX cards that you can exchange for, but it's only one of each card, so it's kind of like just for a show because you need five of them to max them out for it to actually be good. But personally, I love it because just last video I complained about my four copies of Little Sister and Sweets, and just like one or two days after, Phantasma has answered my prayers. For those of you who don't know, the Elemental EX stages and the Conflux stages are a global exclusive made by Phantasma. It has been 5 months since then without any content from Phantasma. At around the same time, the exchange shops for the JPEX stages also disappeared. Basically, Phantasma is great for the game's economy, he's great for the game's endgame, and I'm really excited to have him back. All this sounds great and all, but there's still an issue with characters and power creep. Characters are designed by the JP team and they don't really seem to have a good grasp of balance, releasing some very strong and some very weak characters. It's either they have no idea what they're doing, or they know exactly what they're doing and they think they'll make more money this way. If the latter is true, it's a really shitty thing to do because they are taking advantage of players' ignorance and getting them to spend a lot of money on an epic unit that's crap. Epics are really expensive by the way, and there's no guarantee even if you spend a ton of money. On the global version, they also had a special step up, which no other epic ever had by the way, for a limited time of 72 hours. It's almost as if they knew she was a bad unit and wanted people to pull before they could find out from players like me. I also find it kinda strange that the Game Press article for her came out quite a bit late, like half a day after release. When I asked, this is what they had to say. I think it's really clear cut that Hecatia is bad, unlike someone like Beach Yukari, who I undervalued a little bit. So, assuming that the writers are competent, it really shouldn't be that hard to write an analysis. But maybe that's another reason why the article was delayed so much. Being the official wiki, GamePress does receive character information from the developers a couple of days before their release, but maybe in this case, the developers simply forgot or somehow failed to release the information on time. Whatever the case, a time-limited purchase like this, with little information on the value of what you're getting, kinda sounds like the signs of a scam. This is probably not the only gacha to do this where you are punished for your ignorance, but that's why it's just important to have an understanding of the meta, especially if you're gonna spend money on the game. But back to the issue of power creep. More recently, they have been releasing units which aren't too powerful, but also have their own kinda unique role to fill. For example, Ultra Festival Oku and Arden, which I wrote about in this community post. Power creep is really bad for the game long run, so the fact that they are toning down on the power creep means that they are intending to keep the game alive for at least a decent amount of time. Less power creep also keeps the game more interesting because there's more room for stage design without worrying that a single character will just destroy the entire stage. Overall, all these changes restores a little bit of faith that I have in the game. But if the game were to really to survive in the long term, I think it does need some new mechanics. I had a lot of fun messing around with the bug where your character's spell cards could turn into last words, and maybe they could add some something like that in a special stage. It would be cool if they experimented with special stages in which there are large changes to how combat works. Whatever the case, the game does have some potential, but it remains to be seen the direction the developers will take it. And so, ending of this video is the savior of the whole of the global, Phantasma. Subscribe. Subscribe. Thank you guys for watching today and we hope to see you soon.